Ha! How am I ever going to find a drill in here? Oh my goodness, that's disgusting. <laughs> yes, this is a toolbox I inherited from my father. And um, as you can see, it has lots of drills in there. But I'll never ever find the one I'm looking for. And so I'm going to sort this out. Um, it's still got, this box can still be for files and rasps and the giant drills but these ones that I might actually use someday I'm gonna sort those out I'm gonna make them their own box so let's do it okay so I knew there was something here that I wanted to recycle and this I found in amongst all the stuff as I was <laughs> unpacking the boxes we bought back from my dad's and um, it needs a bit of TLC it's got just it's just a rough storm box and this handle has come away so my target is to reuse the wood from the handle to make dividers I don't need that many dividers I just want something to keep really big ones away from the really small ones and a couple in between um, and then we should be good. So let's move over to the bench and get this dismantled and up and running again. Okay, so first piece of work that I need to do is get this handle out because it is really well stuck. Um, just looking and I think it's just a matter of Wiggling, yay! So now that we've got that out, we can get rid of the nail gun nails and all the leftover bits. Let's put that into my rubbish bin. And then the next step is going to be just getting rid of these bits of staple um, purely because I don't want to scratch my hands on them when I'm trying to get a drill bit out so staples if they are in reasonably straight you can just treat them like a nail and pry them out just like that where'd that go find it when i tweak up tonight sometimes though they do that they bend and stretch and do weird stuff so if that happens you're gonna need to get some pliers and try and wiggle them out so First off, I'm going to do the other end. Try and get those to come out. There we go. The important part is to have no sharp bits sticking front or back, inside or out. Because if you've got sharp bits, you've got a danger zone. <coughs> got it. Woohoo! I give up. <laughs> that is bent over and stuck in really nicely. Now the next piece is to go around and check that all the other staples are holding together and I can see that this one is starting to wear a little bit loose. 
so I'm just gonna gonna get a another nail and tack that down. how long my husband's had this it, <laughs> it's gone um, and faded but it's never been opened how's it getting any better than that so this is kind of a little bit like what I'm looking to create for the the screw the Screw bits. Now. I know that that's not going to come out now. It's nice and sealed up. We've got a lovely gap. No gaps in there anymore. And I'm ready to do the next step which is measure it up so the smaller the piece it the smaller the bits the less space they're going to need but also you're going to need to be able to get your fingers in to get them okay although this is designed originally to fit that way I'm actually going to cut it just in thin bits and put them in that way um, so I need let's have a, a rough out we need one for the big ones one for the medium ones And I might do the others and two going this way. So we've got little ones over here, medium ones over there, and then if I turn that around so you guys can see what I'm doing. I think actually if I go half halfway and then half that and half it that one that way we should be good so we're going to need one two at that length and one at that length so I'm actually going to put those two in first and then measure up for that one second all right so first what I want to do is I just want to check these move you ever notice that <laughs> so if you really want accurate measurements start from the number one now as you can see I'm in New Zealand and I work in centimeters but as we're not building something specific I think you guys will be fine all right 200 I think we rip it down to 200, well, cut it minus the one, so 19 centimetres or 190 mil. Then we'll be able to get that rest of it out. So let's do that. Now, I just want to point out, if you're using a drop saw uh, or a any of those sorts, any of these sorts of saws, please, 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 minimum safety glasses and earmuffs. Um, depending on what you're cutting, you also might want to be wearing a mask 
but as this is just whole wood we should be good um, we've got our wood saw in so the next thing we need to do is as I said I want to 19 centimeters 190 mil but I want to make sure that we've got we're starting off with a clean straight edge so first of all what we need to do is make sure that our blade is at 90 degree angle to our um, to our fence and it's not quite not quite it needs to go. so there we go all good tighten that up so why did I do that? This is quite an old drop saw. It's been used for construction work, not fine woodworking. And it's it's been thrashed basically. It's cut uh, concrete covered wood. It's cut all sorts. And the guys don't tend to look after it as a fine artist would. <laughs> So it's always good to check that your blade and your fence are straight. Um, just going to check this other side as well. The, with the fences being separate. Yes, that's lovely, jubbly. <laughs> Oops, I still need that. Um, so my first step is going to be to trim this edge and, um, and so that it's flush with this edge. All right. Just make sure it's completely clean place to start and then we can do our measure and cut of our 19mm. So, goggles back on. perfectly all right so then we just need to measure from there to there and cut again and we will know that we've got a beautiful rectangular base now this is a cool um, combination square in that it's got inches on one side and centimeters on the other so, just move my pencil gone. There we go. Once again, I'm just going to do <coughs> twenty to one. Now it always pays just to notice when you're using a pencil, pencils aren't particularly, well, especially not when they're sharpened like mine, um, they're not necessarily a perfect mark. So just notice whether your mark goes where your mark is. In, so mine is starting at the edge it's perfect, but as it comes in, it squiffs off. So my so I measured from here to here. So I need that mark to be um, on this side of 
my saw. Why is my saw not going back any further? It's weird. So I'm just gonna Yep, that looks good. to just just gonna put um, we've basically got that whole area to use and if I do half and half we should be good so let's put this aside for later because we need that and let's have a look we've got When you allow for a cutting bit, you've got about nine and a half centimeters, 95 mil. And so I'm just gonna bring it down to nine and then it's easy to divide. <laughs> um, always make your, your measurements ease, guys. Choose ease wherever possible. Because uh, what I'm actually gonna be doing is I'm gonna be marking off at four and a half centimeters. But then I'm going to mark again after I've done the cut. Because the cut is going to take away some of our um, some of our wood. And you know what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to mark it further up. And the reason for that is uh, I want to do I want to get this blade in the right place and it's not really working up here. So mark it where it works for you guys. It's where you can get your blade lined up. That looks great. record at the <laughs> the next bit um okay so what happened let me take you for a quick tour when i cut through the fence just to make that initial cut with it so much higher than this piece of wood i didn't want it to be um to have to be doing that while i was trying to hold this in place so what happened is, as you can see, the bit of wood lost its tension once it was cut and it sprung out. So even though it's nice and tightly attached to the fence, the wood had some tension in it and when it was cut, it... Can you actually see that gap in here between this fence and this one? So, um... So what I did is I got the clamp and clamped that back. Hello, airplane! Uh, and that got that more into a straight edge for me to work on. I then went ahead and cut out my two two bits. I don't know which way around these went. Oh, I can't tell. Who knows? Who cares? Doesn't really matter. Um, 
cut out my two bits which left that and now we're good to put it in the box so let's go back to the bench and do that all right so as I said I'm gonna put we're at about just over just over 29 centimeters well, just over 30 centimeters just on 30 centimeters and so I'm going to put the first line at 15 and the second line at seven and a half uh, actually now this side actually takes up that so we've actually got about a centimeter taken up with that so if I go at 15 a 15 center and then I also go maybe we could push it out maybe but meh. no I'm gonna push it out to 15 16 center there and because we've got a one centimeter bit of wood there we've got 15 left so we need to go to eight and a half for it. so eight and a half and 16 Do the same on the other side, making sure, of course, that we have um, that we do them from the same end. So, two, four, six, eight, and a half, and Another half, one and a half, two and a half, three and a half, four and a half, five and a half, six and a half, seven and a half. There we go. And turn it around and just use our square to draw a line up there. So why am I drawing these lines? Because I would like them to put the pilot holes on them. So I'm just gonna have a look when that's sitting on the base there we've only got from 12 to 16 we've got so if I put one at 13 and one at 15 then we're gonna be good to go Going the other way, one at 18. They don't have to match up perfectly, but you know what? Practicing getting things accurate at this stage in your development of woodworking skills is going to create a better, um, better result in the future. Now, One trick that I've learned by watching lots and lots of YouTubing trick videos is to cut to do your pilot hole you cut the end off your nail size that you're going to be using and drill the pilot hole with that so let's give that a go I have never done this before but you and I are gonna discover if that's a good trick or not together I believe this is one of the hacks from Woodworking Web videos.
nice and tight in there. And that's going wonky. That is not staying straight now. is so soft that I could probably almost push that nail through there. And just get so started. The really cool thing about a nail, it's got a sharp point on it. So you just put your point on it and push a little bit and you already started and your drill bit's not going to wiggle too much. So that makes it super easy. So I'm just going to tap these in so that they come out the other side. So that I've got a starting point. I'm not gluing this. As you can see, it's not. Um, it's not pretty enough to worry about that. So let's get this bit in. as a backstop just so the but the box doesn't go flying off into F space. I might have to drill these ones though. What do you reckon? Drill that in, eh? Just that first one. pilot hole just got that started and I'm gonna do the same on the bottom. I'll do this top one first though. Now I just want to show you it's not actually going far in but and it was really obvious when I was hitting it um, how far the pilot hole had gone because it just kind of almost slides in and then I have to hit it harder. Alright. So make sure so now we've got a pivot point. 
okay so that can still move a bit in there because we've only got one at each end and the cool thing now is if you want to be fanatical you could get a um, 90 degree angly bit in there and give it a good straighten out but it's the other side okay which now this one's a bit funny we've got a slight notch there from the angle of the dangle but we've also got a ripped out staple hole here and I'd actually rather that be at the bottom and that light slight notch be at the top so I'm going to put it in that way now just to help me I'm gonna mark where my holes are so I can see that a bit better. along the line I've got on the top and eyeballing it to see if it's reasonably centered yep that one's good and this one needs to move over a bit Get a loop. So let's pile a hole. One on each end again. Have another quick look. Yep, that'll do. Should be right, mate. Have a bradder. People with bradders would get in there and go ping, 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 ping. You're done. I don't have one. Look, this one's actually almost got holes or where the uh, where the original handle pulled out. It's got a center line marked already for me. How's it getting any better than that? Now, as you can see, they're not particularly perfect, but it doesn't need to be. We just started out to be. So we've got a bit of wood here and it's going to sit in there like that. So I'm going to trim up this and then mark where that comes to and we can cut that off and then cut
cut it to height. So, back to the saw. Alright, so once again, eye protection, hearing protection. I'm just going to trim that little bit. square pretty good not bad at all for that short distance um, so now that I've got that I'm just gonna sit this on there like that and then I can, with my pencil, which is hiding, mark off on both sides. Try not to get my head in the way. And Blah blah blah. It's just there's our line. So once again, I'm gonna go. So my line is definitely on this side of when the cut needs to be. And I'm going to go just a little bit to the long end. I can always sand it back if I need to. Good job I went long because that's a bit loose. That's right about that I'm not getting. So let's just mark up the height that we require to get it matching the rest. I save those little shim bits. To fill up that gap. <laughs> How's it getting any better than that? Okay, so back to the bench and the question then becomes is how do I do this bit? It's a great question. I'm not really sure. Okay, so I've had a bit of a think and I think the best way to get this piece into here is by using some glue. Um, I've got a clean edge here and this bit here is actually a bit of a knot. So it's actually, even though this is rough sawn, this is actually quite smooth. So I'm going to go for that. Um, and... 
The other thing then becomes how do I clamp it? And in my inheritance box, I found these corner clamps. Um, but the only thing with that is to get so that this can corner clamp, so I can actually turn this, we're not going to be quite centered. But once again, this is not a glory box. It's going to be handed down for generations. This is a screwdriver, a screw, a drill bit box that's going to do a job. So I'm actually going to glue this in place first and then nail the end. Um, so First thing I need to do is save myself a bit of angst and get that basically pretty much close to where the width of that bit of board is on both ends. And that's going to save a lot of time once I'm trying to do it in the box. Pretty much being able to just slip it on and a couple of little turns and we're done. That's the way to do that. Uh, so this is my center line down here and while I, before I start putting glue on what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put my center line through here and plan my spots for my nails and pre-drill. which is a PVA glue, strongly bonds MDF, pine and ply. Um, so this is just pine. I bought this one, I'm making my son a Murphy, well my son and I are going to make a Murphy bed. So keep your eyes peeled for that. I'm going to put a bit down the bottom as well, just to prep that. not going to be clamped to the bottom necessarily but it'll do so this is the side we're going to be gluing to and there's my lines I'm not very accurate with my cutting I think I might need to practice that before I start building fine furniture so then I'm going to slip our little corner clamp in there. Now the way this works is you put your bits of wood through there and so that the corner is up here and then you screw these down to hold them in place and this, um, this keeps it at a right angle. So just dropping that down in there making sure we're lined up in both directions it's nice and tight there keep turning them the wrong way because it's upside down if you believe that I've got a bridge I can sell yet that's so not working so I'm just going to 
grab my clamp. nice and tight down on there hopefully it'll hold and I'm gonna reshim this quite a big hole in there now it's not quite big enough for that one though but maybe enough for two of these Lost one of my shims. It fell out. Oh well. So we've got a big gap at this end. Which I'm just going to snap my shims in half. Put some glue. as I can get it to go. Just pack it in. Pack it in with some glue. I saw one tip on a hacks video is to mix your PVA if you if your joints aren't gonna fit very well together mix your PVA with some sawdust before you put the pieces together and then the sawdust kind of becomes wood with the glue with the wood with the glue kind of makes a little MDF -y bit in the middle <laughs> All right, so I'm going to let that set up, come back. Now, this glue asks you to give best clamp for three to four hours and will re reach maximum strength at 24 to 48 hours. So, it's getting dark, it's getting late, and I'm going to my mother-in-law's for dinner. So... I'll be back in the morning to finish this. See you soon. So, it's actually been a couple of days because 
you know, the world got busy. Um, so <laughs> let's take this, oh, take this off and see how it went without snapping it. First time I've ever used a corner break, a corner paint. Been watching videos on how to make them. Might uh, need to make some more. I've only got two of these, three of these, so I need to make some more before we do the big project. There you go, nice and stiff, and that will do the job. Should we go and put it, put the drill bits in? I think so. So there you go. It's not perfect, but it's a heck of a lot better than what the um, the previous box looked like, as you saw at the beginning of the video. So, how's it getting any better than that? What else can I create now? Bye.